Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trailhead DX. My name's Hannah Trimby, and today I'm going to be talking to you about some exciting new enhancements to the development platform, specifically around how we can all build faster than ever before on modern web standards. I'm normally based out of Melbourne, Australia, so I'm very excited to be here in this lovely city with you all today. I'm a lead solution engineer, so I work with customers like yourselves, and I understand their fundamental business challenges, and then design Salesforce solutions around those needs. Anyone not seen this slide before? In case anyone is completely new to Salesforce events, just a reminder to please base your purchasing decisions on the basis of functionality which is generally available. So today, I'm going to be talking to you about how we can build apps faster using modern web standards, specifically with Lightning Web Components. Anyone used Lightning Web Components yet? Fantastic. As you probably are already aware, we are all connected. We're in the midst of what is being coined the fourth industrial revolution. Over the last 100 or so years, we've seen some pretty incredible innovations. So we've gone from steam to electricity to digital computing. And now we're in this era of robotics and AI. And it's basically transforming customer expectations. They expect to be able to access the information that they need whenever and however they want it. This represents challenges as an organization. But this is where Salesforce can help. The customer success platform is really at the key of driving this transformation to deliver success for your business. With the customer success platform, you can connect through sales, through service, through marketing, through commerce, on any touch point that your customers might need. But Salesforce isn't just a technology platform. We're doing well, but we also believe in doing good. We have got so many trailblazers now that IDC is actually coining this the Salesforce economy. They are anticipating that by 2022, there's going to be over 3.3 million new jobs globally, just from Salesforce. And this is going to have an $850 billion GDP impact. It's pretty phenomenal. If you're an organization that's considering implementing Salesforce, it's really important that you're aware that there's this growing, thriving network of skilled individuals that are ready to help you achieve success. But how do we skill up these individuals? Anyone heard of Trailhead? Anyone a ranger yet with 100 badges or more? It's pretty good, pretty good stats there. So we've now got over 5 million Salesforce developers who have skilled themselves up using Trailhead. That's over 50 countries worldwide. And we've got over 12 million badges that have been earned so far. If you haven't checked out Trailhead yet, make sure you do so before the end of this conference. But today we're here to talk about building on modern web standards. There's a number of gains when we actually use these modern web standards, which we'll be looking at in a demo later. Specifically, we've got significant productivity gains. There's a lot of performance enhancements and these modern web standards are completely interoperable with your existing frameworks. If you've used the Salesforce development platform before, you'll be aware that when we first launched, we gave you tools like Visual Force and Apex. So you could customize your applications. Then in 2014, there was this massive change when we launched the Lightning Framework, and with it came the Aura component model. We've continued to enhance and develop We've had Trailsforce DX, we've had platform services, and most recently, we have delivered Lightning platform components, which is what we're going to talk about today. But it's helpful just to take a step back and look at why we're giving you Lightning Web Components. So if we look at the stack back in 2014, there was a few foundation elements there around web standards. So we had a very basic rendering engine, we had standard elements, there was events, and there was a core programming language, ECMAScript 5. But this foundation, it lacked the large-scale enterprise class capability that as developers we need to create these, these multiple UIs. So the stack 
now looks very different to how it looked back in 2014. It's now heavily leaning towards web standards. We brought in custom elements. So we've now got things like decorators and modules and classes and custom elements, which are really helping us develop these large scale enterprise class and applications. And this is where Lightning Web Components fits in. Lightning Web Components is Salesforce's version of all of these modern web standards that have been delivered over the last few years. We've enhanced productivity by giving you some modern language constructs. So you've now got elements, you've got classes, and you've got modules, and you've got imports. It's engineered for performance, so we're giving you something called the Lightning Data Service. So this uses things like metadata and the cache. So it's all rendered in the browser. And best of all, it's completely compatible with your existing frameworks, really easy to use. So if you are new to Salesforce, you don't have to learn any new languages. You can build on existing languages that you know, like JavaScript. Just a quick look now at the architecture of Lightning components and how they work. A Lightning component is basically a completely encapsulated reusable unit of code. It can range in granularity from a single line to an entire application. It makes use of these things called base components. These can be wrapped in modern web languages. So you can use HTML, you can use CSS, you can use JavaScript or any web compatible language you want. And because they're completely encapsulated, it means that you can make changes to these components without actually impacting any of the consumers. If you've already been using the Lightning platform for development and you're familiar with the Aura framework, you can carry on using that. You don't have to change. It's completely compatible with the existing Lightning web components. If you decide that you want to make changes to your UI, that's when you can start building new components with LWCs, as they're called. If you want to stick with Aura, you can stick with Aura. If you're new to Salesforce, you may as well start building now with Lightning Web Components, because there is significant benefits to using this language. And I'm going to show you that in a demo now. So starting off in the trailhead sample gallery here. This is publicly available, so if you'd like to check this out later, I will provide a link. This is a really useful resource. Salesforce developers use this every day. It's got all of these sample apps specifically related to Lightning Web Components. If I look at this recipes one, which is the one we're going to focus on today, all of the code for these Lightning Web Components is available on GitHub. And there's really easy installation instructions, so you can install it into your Scratch org. I've done this in advance. And this is what it looks like. So it's given me a lovely little app called LWC. And across the top, I've got all these tabs with some cards and Lightning Web Component recipes. They're all collected based on their relevance. So on this first tab, I've got some Hello cards. And each of these is an individual recipe, which is lines of code 30 lines or less, productivity gains already. I'm going to start with a really simple example. It's this hello binding one. All this does is accept an input string and display it on the view. See how it changes? Very simple, but this will really show you the power of using modern web standards. Let's check out the code behind this. So it all begins with a very simple import. I've just imported the module using standard ECMAScript. I'm also using standard classes here. I've got my hello binding class. Where it gets interesting is where I've used this custom element. I've used the at track decorator to make the greeting reactive so that when the input string changes, the greeting automatically changes in the view. But let's check out the HTML that sits behind this. A 
again, I'm using standard tags, so I'm just using HTML template tags here. And we can see that I'm using the curling index to bind the greeting so that when it updates in the view, it changes. Best of all, you can see I'm using a base lightning component here called lightning card. When I hover over this and click the link, it takes me to documentation that tells me what that base lightning component is. If you're a developer, you know how little productivity enhancements within the itself can really help your productivity. Every lightning web component and its specification and documentation is available here. One last thing I wanted to show you for this recipe, if we just go to inspect DOM, we can actually see that we've now got a custom tag for the hello binding. Again, productivity gains using custom The next recipe that I want to show you is around metadata. I'm just clicking into a contact record here. And we can see that I've got a number of fields that I can edit from the view itself. Now, this is all being edited via metadata fields. So if I look at the code that sits behind this, I can see that, again, using very simple HTML, I'm just binding the fields using one line of code here. If I look at the actual code that sits behind this, all of these fields have been, been imported from the schema as metadata. This gives us really powerful referential integrity because I can't delete any of the fields from the UI because they're used in the code. And similarly, I can't use a field if it's not declared in the code. All of these fields are just referenced using their metadata. So there's no complex query to the database. How's that for productivity gains? Let's go back to the browser. So the next demonstration is all about the amazing performance enhancements of the platform. I'm here on the Apex class here, and I'm using a very simple Apex method to search for a contact. If I search for Andy as a contact, we can see here at the bottom that did a call to the server, and it took around 190 milliseconds or so. It's not bad. Let's search now for Lauren. And again, it took around 600 milliseconds. But if I search again now for Andy, there's no call to the server. And that's because it's being retrieved from the cache. Let's take a look at the code that sits behind that. It's all based around this cache bool equals true flag, which sits in the controller. Very simple, but it basically means that we get that performance enhancement. But how do I actually call this class from within my Apex? Well, very simply, I've imported my find contacts method into the code here. And I've used the at wire decorator to bind that method based on the search key as the input. Again, just one line of code there. Using custom elements, you're really getting those performance enhancements. The next recipe I want to show you is around the compatibility. So the in in inter interoperability of the existing components with Aura and Lightning Web Components. Here, we're embedding a Lightning Web Component in an Aura Component. If I click on Lauren Boyle here, the list of contacts is done in a Lightning Web Component and the contact is displayed in an Aura component. Let's look at the code that sits behind this. So very simple Aura component syntax. Sitting further down, we have the Lightning Web component. That's embedded within it, one line of code, and it's using the exact same syntax as the Aura component. I didn't need to learn anything new. I can just start using Lightning Web Component syntax and get all of these awesome benefits. If we go back to the browser, at the bottom here, we've got the exact same use case 
But in this case, they're not embedded within each other. They're just sitting side by side on the page. So if I search for Andy here, Andy is then displayed in the Lightning Web component. And those two components are interacting through events in a publish and subscribe model. If we look at the code sitting behind that one, we can see here how simple it is. But I'm making use of these methods here called connected callback and disconnected callback. What if this wasn't my Lightning Web component? I, I don't know what that method does. Well, because we're using modern web implementation, I can actually just Google that. So let's see what Google has to say. First, web components by MDN. If I scroll down, I can see immediately a lifecycle callback which describes this method in detail. Previously, I would have had to have gone from community to community to try and find out what that method did. And now, it's all available on Google. So I hope that gives you a little bit of a sneak peek of some of these gains that you can get from using Lightning Web Components and these modern web standards. I'm just going to go back to the presentation. So, if you liked what you saw here today, we have the recipe sample app, which is available on Trailhead. The link is available there. There's also several Trailhead badges that you can complete that will get you, give you an idea of how you can start to build out these new Lightning Web components yourself. So, Quick Start Guide is really a great place to start. It's super simple. It'll walk you through it step by step. For anyone who's a little bit more advanced with Lightning Web components, I really recommend today that you visit the second floor. There's a workshop called Ideate and Build Lightning Web Components in Camp Innovation. That's running every hour on the hour, and it basically enables you to create your own web components based on your own innovation ideas. There's a number of really amazing breakouts and theater sessions as well, so stay tuned for those over the next few days. I hope that you've enjoyed the session and enjoy the next two days and good luck building your lightning web components.